got a big announcement coming up today, sometime today, tonight. We don't know when, but it just came out on Twitter from the official NWA Twitter account, which has been largely inactive for a long time. So it's good to see some some action, some movement there. You know what I mean? To like get those alerts. I don't know about you guys. I have the alerts turned on. Anytime the NWA tweets, it comes straight to my phone. And nice. uh, I haven't gotten an alert in a while. And so I got one today. Said breaking news, big announcement. We have just received a video challenge for the 10 pounds of gold for September 15th, UWN Primetime Live. And they're going to really air that tonight um, on social media. So be looking out for that. J. Cal, what do you think? Man, it takes it back to the old school, doesn't it? I mean, it was just two years ago, or I guess closer to three years ago, the 10 pounds of gold. That series, man, it was all about the social media and using social media to promote the NWA. It's something that they obviously haven't been able to promote a whole lot in the last few months, but, God, it kind of just feels good to see it see it coming back. You know what I mean? And, uh, you know, there's a lot of fans who are disenfranchised right now with the National Wrestling Alliance. There has been that inactivity, but things are heating up, brother. The kitchen's going, and Dave Marquez is over there stirring the pot. Yeah, and, you know, we've talked a little bit about this. You and I are kind of in a unique position. We are content creators talking about wrestling. We can we can keep the conversation going, but when you're talking about wrestling fans as a whole, you know, to just drop off the, the face of the map like that, it, it doesn't really do well for your, your public standing. And so it does feel good. You're right. It feels good, you know, because we've been on here saying, hey, NWA is not shutting down. They're not going anywhere. We'll be back. This is just part of the process. There's a lot going on in the world right now. Um, but now we got something to, like, stake that claim on and say, hey, see, look, we got some movement. We got some stuff going on. Not to mention Thunder Rosa challenging Sheeta for the AEW women's title. And on you know, national TV, we talked a little bit about that in the past couple of weeks. And, uh, man, it just, it just feels good. Let me just take a minute real quick before we get too – too much into it because I know I mean, we've got a lot to talk about, but I also want to point out that we lost an icon yesterday. We lost a, a man who his literal family uh, has made up professional wrestling for the last 30 years. And I'm talking about bullet Bob Armstrong yeah. and I'm talking about a 53 year uh, career in the world of professional wrestling. I mean, this guy had his first match in 1966 and had his last match last year on uh, May the 11th, 2019. Um, so that in and of itself is pretty incredible. But the fact that his his literal bloodline has uh, dominated professional wrestling, not unlike the Von Erichs, not unlike the Hart family. I think a, a lot of people go to sleep on that legacy that came from the Southeast. I mean, he's a two-time former NWA Georgia TV champion, a nine-time NWA Southeastern heavyweight champion and only tops that by being an 11 time NWA Southeastern tag team champion. There's so many positive things we could say about bullet Bob, but the last thing we can say is rest in peace, sir. Yeah. And it's definitely a tough loss and you're right, man. That's he's kind of, he is part of the WWE hall of fame. So at least he's been recognized in, in that way. Um, but he, he is kind of one of the under, uh, recognized and, and under celebrated stars, not to mention, you know, you and I are dads and we understand what it means to have a legacy. And you look at his legacy, Brad Armstrong, uh, you look at uh, Road Dog Jesse James, and just the impact that he's going to continue to have on the industry because of the way that he brought his boys up. He's got a couple other uh, sons that one's a wrestler, I think one's a referee. And so just that impact and that um, effect and that legacy that he's having on. Um, professional wrestling can't be stated enough. So, yeah, I, I'm with you. Rest in peace. Uh, thoughts and prayers to the family. And it's definitely a big loss for um, for the sport of professional wrestling. With that being said, though, I mean, we do have a lot of positives to talk about. And, uh, you know, we. It, it, I wish sometimes I wish people could hear our uh, our conversations that we have on, offline because they might even be better than the show at, at points. And this week has been it's been a doozy of a week, man. I mean, we're one week removed from, you know, our women's champion, Thunder Rosa, kicking the damn door in to AEW and putting it all on the line and making that challenge. What were your thoughts when you saw that? Uh, well, we talked a little bit about this on, on our show Tuesday night, and I know you hit on it. 
um, on the pre-party on Tuesday. And it, it, it just kind of hit me when I heard you talking about it on, on the pre-party, the fact that l- let's just all step back and let's grasp the, the, the bigness of this moment, right? When was the last time, and this is kind of what we're going to talk about tonight, and I know you've got some historical reference for some of this stuff, but when was the last time in this modern era of wrestling that a active world champion from one promotion showed up on another promotion and challenged that world champion to a match and said, I want your title. Like, when is the last time that's happened? Like, could you imagine that ever happening on WWE? No, it would never happen. If it was, it would be a mockery. They would be devaluing whatever, you know, title. And and that's where a lot of the cynicism comes from with this Thunder Rosa aspect. And we talked a little bit about that. And I don't want to harp on that. But, I mean, just, just sit back as a wrestling fan, right? Not a, not a jaded, cynical, you know, wrestling business nerd. Step back as a wrestling <laughs> fan and sit back and say, how big is this moment in wrestling history? You know what I mean? And that's kind of where I'm at. That's how I'm taking all this in. And it's just, I'm finally starting to see the reality and just how big this really is in the scope of things. Now, when we talk about an NWA champion, I mean, it's not, it's not actually that far out of the realm to see an NWA world champion appear in other places. I mean, we can go as far back as 1998, I believe it was, the NWA invasion of the World Wrestling Entertainment. It was kind of like to counteract the NWO, but you there you had Dan the Beast Severin with a legendary 10 pounds of gold flanked by Howard Brody and Dennis Coraluzo with Jim Cornette, of all people, bringing that title to the WWE. Now, you kind of hinted on it earlier it was kind of made a mockery. I mean, everyone knew Dan Severn was a badass, but they weren't going to put the world's heavyweight champion against Stone Cold, against The Rock. That match wasn't going to happen. Um, they didn't even really put him in an intercontinental title defense, nor did he really ever defend the 10 pounds of gold on television. He would just kind of come out, kick ass, and leave, and you would have that visual of him carrying the UFC belts and the NWA belts. And, uh, well, I mean... It was a great visual, but we never really got an NWA world champion versus a WWE champion in any, any of that effect. Um, in a more modern sense, we did have Jeff Jarrett, who was the NWA world champion of Impact Wrestling, taking on the man that they call Sting for World Wrestling All-Stars. Now, if you guys don't remember that, don't worry about it. You didn't miss a whole lot. But the World Wrestling All-Stars was a promotion that was mostly a pay-per-view slash touring company that was kind of took the surviving members of WCW that weren't working for uh, WWE when when that whole thing happened. And although it was short-lived, they did feature a lot of highly touted names, Jeff Jarrett, Macho Man Randy Savage, uh, Sabu, uh, Christopher Daniels, Frankie Kazarian, Eddie Guerrero. We can go on and on. But most importantly, there was a matchup that literally unified the World Wrestling All-Stars Championship and the NWA World's Heavyweight Championship. But that's the last time we've seen a champion from the NWA go to another promotion and challenge for that title. And, and, you know, also times have changed. You know, we talk about this a lot. I mean, as fans of the NWA and hashtag NWA fam, a lot of times we have our eye on yesteryear, right? And we're talking about territories and things like that. And it, and it obviously wasn't uncommon then for Ric Flair, Harley Race, Dusty Rhodes to show up, you know, in various territories. And that, that was kind of the nature of, of the NWA back then. But, but that's why when I say the modern era of wrestling, we're talking about the wrestling business. We're talking about since, since Vince took WWF, worldwide and now the the standard is not the territory model it is have a promotion treat it as a separate business uh do everything you can to elevate your business and your business alone and go that route and so it's it's the first time that we've seen in this era that kind of 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 cross promotion between two businesses because this is the reality the nwa is a business. They are their own business. They're owned by Billy Corgan, and that is its own promotion. The AEW is its own business. It's its own promotion. They're out for AEW. 
but the 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 fact that we're seeing this kind of plays nice together um, thing, it's out of left field for a lot of us because we're just not used to it. Um, and you, you know, you talk to people who were there during the territory days, maybe it doesn't seem that out out of character for pro wrestling because they've seen that and they lived through that. But for for me, who's been a wrestling fan, you know, since the the WCW days and you know lived through the Attitude Era and the Monday Night Wars and all that kind of stuff. This is this is really unheard of. And I just, you know, one of the things that we have talked about a lot lately, again, I, I hinted at it earlier, but just this, this idea that now we need to shrink back and be scared about losing talent or whatever, AEW and all this kind of stuff. And it it's not about that. It's about the precedence being set and the kind of the tip of the hat to history that Billy Corgan and, you know, apparently, hopefully Tony Khan, they're not taking on this new evil empire mentality of, oh, my gosh, I got to get mine and I'm going to hoard talent. I'm going to do all this stuff. They're looking at the greater good of professional wrestling and how can we all win? How can we elevate the sport as a whole? And that's what I'm excited about. And so I, I love talking about the history of it, like you're mentioning, just to put into context that, like, this is not out of character for wrestling. Even though it feels out of character, it's especially not out of character for the National Wrestling Alliance. And and just to even kind of go more with that, I mean, uh, I didn't purposely leave it out, but the matchup between Scrap Iron Adam Pierce and, um, oh gosh, now the name is escaping me. You're going to help me out with this. Former uh, Nigel McGinnis, former Ring of Honor world champion. They did do a title versus title match in Ring of Honor. Uh, but I don't know that that was as big as all elite wrestling working with the NWA. And I mean, there's been countless times over the last 20 years of Ring of Honor's existence where the NWA has been a part of their shows, whether it be AJ Styles or Brent Albright or Scrap Iron Adam Pierce, or even modern day, our own Nick Aldis uh, defending that title in Ring of Honor. But this is another level. This is where we're taking the top guy or gal the top champion of the NWA, the women's champion, versus the women's champion of, of AEW. And this is the stakes are much higher. And again, in a world where uh, content views is currency and eyeballs are currency, AEW is delivering with the help from the NWA. And what world did we think that was going to happen? I mean, 2020 has been a crazy year, man. Yeah. It sure has, man. And I think that's where I'm coming from, you know, trying to uh, combat as much of the cynicism as I can, because this truly has the potential to be a big moment, as I said, in the history of modern wrestling. It can be a turning point. It can set the stage and set a new precedence. You know, we're, we're talking, you've given us some context and some history about some historical precedents for stuff like this. Um but, you know, again, not a lot of those really match up to what we're experiencing right now. But my point is the potential of the new precedence that's being set, some of these boundaries being torn down in pro wrestling. And let's let's view it as pro wrestling fans and let's just enjoy the moment. I mean, I said it Tuesday and I, I'll say it right now. I think Thunder Rosa wins that match. And now I know a lot of our 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 cynical minds are going to say, well, there's no way that AEW We'll let that, but again, get out of your your re wrestling business nerd bubble and look at it as a fan, and let's just be excited about it. I'm telling you right now, don't be surprised if she wins that match at all out. I, I seriously believe that she will. And one of the things too, when you talk about this this co uh, co collaboration, why was that so hard for me to say? This synergy that's happening. And wrestling, like it kicked off not not tonight, not not last week. This kicked off at All In. Let's remember that All In was a Ring of Honor project that featured New Japan talents, talents from Impact Wrestling, uh, free agents. I mean, this was a show that featured our world's heavyweight champion Nick Aldis taking on Cody, and and neither one of them were contractually obligated to be there. I mean, it was a match that was. Hey, what's good for the fans? And that same mentality is what AEW is doing on September 5th when they're trying to get one of the greatest women's championship matches that we'll ever see. Because, again, I mean, um, sure, there's lots of great women wrestlers out there, and they're all affiliated in different areas, but this is the first time we're seeing the top women in, 
the top women's champion of the NWA taking on the top champion of AEW. And uh, we're going to see something special. I definitely think we're going to see something special. Absolutely. Absolutely agree. I am super excited about it. We're going to continue to talk about it. Uh, obviously, we've got a few more shows between now and then, and uh, there will be a lot to talk about. And then, of course, we'll review it after it happens. But um, I want to pivot just a little bit as we wrap up today and talk about this announcement that's coming tonight. We talked about it briefly at the beginning of the show, but um, I was listening to an interview with Nick Aldis. It was the uh, Battleground podcast. And I saw that they were with us live earlier. Not sure if you're still there. It was a great interview. Go check out the Battleground podcast. They had a two-part interview with Nick Aldis. A lot of great information. He alluded in that interview um, to you know them looking for that first challenger for this UWN Primetime Live um, and hinted that, you know, it could be some big names. Um, it could be somebody that could really, um, you know, get eyes on it and, and sell some pay-per-view buys. So with that in mind, I know we, this is, this is just a wide open conversation. We haven't talked about this before. Um, and we, we did talk last week about who would move the needle, but it, in, in a realistic sense, who's your gut tell you that it's going to be? Well, first off, we have to acknowledge that our world's heavyweight champion is defending tomorrow night at the uh, Independent Wrestling Ex Expo in North Richland Hills, Texas. Number one, we know that he's going to be in the ring with Jeff Cobb and, and a mystery opponent, but we don't know who that is yet. And, of course, our world's heavyweight champion is resilient. I see him walking out still champion, but uh, they could really muck all this up if he loses that title this weekend. Um, who's going to move the needle? Well, geez, after hearing that uh, our women's champion, Fender Rosa, is going to be in AEW, it really makes me feel like anything, anything is uh, on the table. And you start looking at some of the matches that United Wrestling Network is already putting together, uh, announcing Hammerstone, who is the West Coast Pro Wrestling Champion, but also the MLW Open Weight Champion. Uh, defending against EJ Sparks, who is formerly the uh, uh, championship wrestling from Arizona State champion. I mean, that's a big match right there. They've already announced Thunder Rosa will be on that show. So who's going to move the needle? I mean, the sky's the limit. Uh, in, in a best case scenario, the dream case scenario for me, it's got to be Cody. Yep. That's what I'm thinking. Now, there are some things to consider. Now, we know that Cody uh, lost the TNT uh, championship last week, took a pretty big beating, um, and uh, word on the street is he's been written off of AEW TV so he can take a break. But we've brought up on our show, what if that break is so that he can go do something else for a little while? Now, it would pose some problems with the storyline in AEW that he's injured and he's out of commission. That's why he's not there. So I don't know if there will be continuity issues there. The other thought I had is, especially now that he is part of AEW, what if we see an Eddie Kingston now? I mean, we know they're playing nice, and, hey, Thunder Rosa is going to come on your pay-per-view. Let's have the payoff of this Eddie Kingston-Nick Aldis beef. They just reignited it on Twitter this week. Could it be Eddie Kingston? The third choice would, would – and this is kind of out of left field. We haven't talked about this a lot, but what if it's Ricky Starks? I mean – there we know Ricky Starks and Nick Aldis are close. Starks was Aldis's number one draft pick for power. There's a closeness there. Just knowing now that the door is open between NWA and AEW to have some synergy there back and forth. Um, those are just the names that, that come to mind. Now, of course, those are already names that have been tied to the NWA at one time or another. If we're going to go outside of that, Dave Scooby in the chat just mentioned mentions Lance Archer. That would be huge. That would be incredible. Um, so, you know, it could just be co totally somebody out of left field that we're not even thinking about. Um, but it, it is exciting because the possibilities are, are really limitless right now. And one of the things that a lot of people seem to sleep on with Lance Archer is not only is with his history with the NWA being a former, like, three-time NWA tag team champion, but – the guy was hunting for that title years ago. In fact, he even had a shot at Nick Aldis during the 10 Pounds of Gold. Unfortunately, that didn't make the 10 Pounds of Gold series. And he was rightfully so kind of miffed. What if we see a, a very aggressive, very angry, everybody dies, Lance Archer, challenge for that 10 Pounds of Gold? I mean, there, there, there's so many things that could go right. And very, very few things that could go wrong. 
I'm jacked up. And if you guys don't know, United Wrestling Network will be on pay-per-view September 15th and will also be available on Fight. And uh, whew, just waiting for what's next. Yeah, it, it's super exciting. I, I've got to believe it's going to be a big name if they are making this a big announcement like they are. Um, and again, earlier NWA tweeted out that they will be announcing that challenger for September 15th for the 10 pounds of gold later today. So stay tuned to Twitter for that. Obviously, we will have reactions and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, but I am Hey It's Will. You can find me on Twitter at Hey It's Will with one L. Um, and right here on This is the NWA Podcast. So Jake Cal, where can the people interact with you? Guys, I'd really appreciate it if you gave us a follow at the Alliance blog, and that's all social media. You can even find us on YouTube where we do our uh, – every Tuesday we do our pre-party which is to hype you up for what's coming next for the NWA. And I like to kind of think of us as the lead in to this is the NWA podcast. For now, until uh, we lose our Tuesday night spot. On <laughs> but listen, we will graciously step aside and let UWN primetime live have that spot um, just so that we can get some NWA wrestling. Well, listen, thanks everyone for joining us. Thanks everyone in the chat. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Who do you think the announcement's going to be tonight? Um, you know, what would you like to see on September 15th fantasy book and anything like that? And what do you think about this cross promotional synergy that we're seeing between the NWA and AEW. So drop your comments below, uh, like this video, subscribe to This Is The NWA Podcast, subscribe to the Alliance blog. We really appreciate you guys joining us, and we will see you next Friday for another edition of the Friday Hot Tag.